I wanted to read something. This is something that um, uh, Tim Pool has been calling for. So I was I was permanently banned from Facebook um, a couple weeks ago, and I'm sure that I'm going to be permanently banned from a lot of the platforms that you're currently watching me on right now, uh, eventually. And they are taking down more and more people. I think a year and a half ago when they took Alex Jones down, uh, you can go and look at my episode for this. I called it. I nailed it in that show when Alex Jones got taken down. I said that he wasn't going to be the only one. He was the canary in the coal mine. He was the first one. He was the he was the one where the tech companies decided got to see how much elbow room they had to do this, how much they could get away with. I said it. He was not only not going to be the first of a few, but he was going to be the first of many. And not only did I say that, I said that not only they would they would do it faster and faster and more and more often, the more comfortable and like they, they've gotten better about doing it too. They've gotten smarter, I should say. Um, rather than banning him in a like hyper coordinated fashion across the board from all platforms, everything from financial to social media to media platforms all at once, they're, they're better about it. So maybe one person will lose Facebook one day and then YouTube six months later and then PayPal six months after that. And so there's less of a, an inc- like insane outcry. They're, they're more coordinated. They're more smart about how they do it now. And uh, even a middle of the road sort of, um, I guess, what would you call him? Center lefty like Tim Poole. Um, sees that this is a, a danger to society in general because unfortunately for whatever reason the the major tech companies are far left and this look like i'm not like a, a a republican saying this that that's what's interesting about voluntarist channels is that you're not getting opinion from a political bias what's cool about these channels and and i think um the the ones that i watch is that you're getting an opinion that judges both sides of the retarded political aisle harshly. So who, who are, who are you going to get the best truth from somebody that's not on a side or somebody or, or somebody that's on one of those two sides. And so when I say that these companies are far left, I'm not saying that because I'm far right. I'm saying it because that's objectively the case in, in, I guess, in my opinion, I shouldn't say objectively in my opinion getting away from philosophy now so tim pool even tim pool the middle of the road lefty uh says that you know of course is calling for the government to solve the problem uh and you know you're seeing this a lot well you'd expect this from from general status right the solution is more government the solution is more government control over the social media companies the solution to social media companies censorship and taking people down and censoring people's speech and interfering in people's interfering in the elections by controlling what can be talked about and who can talk about it is more government, more government regulations. And they're calling for section 230 reform. Uh, so this is uh, the justice.gov website. And this is a, a, a recommendation I think that came out of um, the Department of Justice released today, a set of reform proposals to update the outdated immunity for online platforms under Section 230 uh, of the Communications Decency Act of 1996. So Section 230 um, is, is the, the part that gives the media companies, the platforms, uh, immunity from prosecution for what other people post on their platform. So for example, if somebody posted something illegal to their Facebook profile. Um, The feds will not go after Facebook for that. The feds will go after the person that posted it and the, the platform will be held immune. And so what people like Tim pool are calling for is more government in this area to not only provide the immunity, but to also force these platforms to allow um, legal speech and to, to take more steps to ban people. So I want to read this recommendation from the Department of Justice, and, um, and we can talk about it. 
Responding to bipartisan concerns about the scope of 230 immunity, the department identified a set of concrete reform proposals to provide stronger incentives for online platforms to address illicit material on their services while continuing to foster innovation and free speech. The department's findings are available here. When it comes to issues of public safety, the government is the one who must act on behalf of society at large. Law enforcement cannot delegate our obligations to protect the safety of the American people purely to the judgment of profit-seeking private firms. We must shape the incentives for companies to create a safer environment. This is right out of the looters and Atlas Shrugged. Which is what Section 230 was originally intended to do, said Attorney General William P. Barr. Quote, taken together, these reforms will ensure that Section 230 immunity incentivizes online platforms to be responsible actors. These reforms are targeted at platforms to make certain they are appropriately addressing illegal and exploitive content while continuing to preserve a vibrant, open, and competitive internet. So, let me skip ahead here. What you're seeing is the government basically saying um, that they can fix it. That they can wade in with regulation and law, public discourse, and somehow attack the illegal stuff. First of all, that's all dubious. Um, a lot of the stuff that they would determine to be illegal uh, has no victim and should not be prosecuted as a crime. And also, on the other hand, weigh in and um, force companies to allow their technology and their servers and their property to be used in ways they disconsent to. Section 230, it says, was originally enacted to protect developing technology by providing that online platforms were not liable for the third-party content on their services or for their removal of such content in certain circumstances. This immunity was meant to nurture emerging internet businesses and to provide and to overrule a judicial precedent that rendered online platforms liable for all third-party content on their services if they restricted some harmful content. However, the combination of 25 years of drastic technological changes and an expansive statutory interpretation left online platforms unaccountable for a variety of harms flowing from content on their platform and with virtually unfettered discretion Oh, can't have that to censor third party content with little transparency or accountability. Following the completion of its review, the Department of Justice determined that Section 230 is ripe for reform. So sort of part one, incentivizing online platforms to address illicit content. The first category of recommendations is aimed at incentivizing platforms to address the growing amount of illicit content online. Illicit content online. I mean, this is broad, right? This includes the really bad stuff like CP, but it includes a lot of stuff that um, the, the government has no right to control. While preserving the core of Section 230's immunity for defamation claims, like included in illicit content, I guarantee you if it's not already in a lot of places, this is going to be uh, files related to the 3D printing of firearms. Guaranteed. Garen guaranteed that will become illicit content and that will fall under here. And what this is going to do is hold the companies criminally. Uh, I think what it'll do is it will remove these companies section 230 immunity if they don't make sure to remove that. While preserving the core of sections 230's immunity for defamation claims, these reforms include a carve-out for bad actors who purposefully facilitate or solicit content that violates federal criminal law or are willfully blind to criminal content on their own surface services. So what you're looking at here is going to be the excuse to begin the attack on encryption again. I, I mean, they've already attempted it multiple times. This will be a renewal of that. Um, Telegram. Signal Messenger, uh, Keybase, um, Matrix Synapse servers, which uh, I'm going to do a video on soon showing people how to connect to it. It's sort of like a, a Discord re replacement that is uh, decentralized, meaning you can run your own server that, you know, a central company can't shut down and that has end-to-end -end encryption, so it's more private. 
uh, and you, you know you're not sharing everything with some uh, SJW company. This will be the the beginning of the attack on that type of encryption. Uh, if all they'll have to do is say, you know, Signal, uh, what is it, Whisper Systems, I think is the company that uh, developed Signal. They'll say, Whisper Systems, look, we have proof here that um, groups of people are trading CP uh, using encrypted uh, end-to-end Signal messages. So we can show you that it's your service is being used for this, and you're not stopping it. And the company will say, well, yeah, I don't have the ability to even see that, much less stop it, because it's encrypted. That's the whole point of our technology. And the government will then be able to say, oh, well, yeah, but now that you know it exists, if you don't stop it, well, you're just being willfully blind to the problem. Just saying that you can't stop it is is uh, not true, right? You could, uh, you could develop uh, a backdoor into the encryption that would allow you to monitor for stuff like this. And to, you know, run hashes on any images posted to see if they're in our CP database, for example. Uh, and so why don't you install uh, an encryption backdoor? In- backdoors and encryption are things that governments have been calling for since the beginning of encryption. This will be a way to try and jam that wedge in again. Promoting open discourse and greater transparency. A second category of proposed reforms is intended to clarify the text and revive the original purpose of the statute in order to promote free and open discourse online and encourage greater transparency between platforms and users. One of these recommended reforms is to provide a statutory definition of good faith to clarify its original purpose. The new statutory definition would limit immunity for content moderation decisions to those done in accordance with plain and particular terms of service and consistent with public representations. These measures would encourage platforms to be more transparent and accountable to their users. This is really, really vague. There's so many different ways to interpret this. I can, I, I find it difficult to even really comment on what it will look like. Um, so I, I'm not going to make too many shots in the dark on it, but it, I mean, for it to do anything to address the problem, it would have to force association between these companies and people. And look, I'm speaking from, I just got permanently banned from Facebook and had 15 years of my digital history on that platform deleted instantly. So it's not like I'm (laughs) um, biased for them when I say this, but Facebook had a right to disassociate from me. It's their servers. It's their company. It's their property. I don't have a right to use it. If they don't want me there, I don't have a right to be there. And um, the the correct principal position is to recognize that. And this would be a violation of their consent and property rights and any other company that operated as a platform. For example, let's just apply it to me now. So we're running a matrix synapse server so that we can move away from the centralized SJW discord. If this type of law passes and somebody comes on my server talking racist garbage, for example, and again, I'm taking a shot in the dark as to what kinds of speech this will force, but I am now sort of a platform. And so I will be controlled on pain of prosecution or fines or losing section 230 immunity. And I'll explain what that would mean in a second. Uh, if I don't allow speech that I disapprove of on my matrix synapse server, that is a violation of my consent, a violation of my property rights. That is a forced association between me and people that is immoral. And if I disobeyed and banned these people from my server that were engaging in terrible speech that I didn't want on my server, even, even good speech, like, look, I don't want people that spam normie good content. If I, if I delete these people, if I ban these people, I lose section 230 protections, which means that if somebody comes along and posts CP on the server, how's the pop filter on this, by the way? When I pop, is it hitting hard? This is a new mic, so you'll have to let me know. But if somebody comes along and posts really nasty stuff on my server, I don't have immunity anymore. That means the government can go after the person and me which means that I don't really want to run a platform anymore. 
if if I run a platform, they're going to force me to use it how they want on pain of assaulting me for how somebody else uses it. No thanks. Not worth it. Clarifying federal government enforcement capabilities. The third category of recommendations would increase the ability of the government to protect citizens from unlawful conduct by making it clear that Section 230 does not apply to civil enforcement actions. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. So those were the, those were the two important ones. Um, forcing companies to police content the government doesn't want and forcing companies to allow content that the companies don't want. That is what is being touted as the great solution to cancel culture by a lot of middle of the road centrist types. A lot of people that think that they're the reasonable ones is basically pointing guns in both directions and feeling like they're the good guys. Like they're the guy with all the answers. Oh no, don't worry guys. I got this all figured out. Section 230 reform. We'll just point guns at everybody in the room and make everybody uh, behave. Yeah, we, we got the solutions right here, guys. Yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome for that. 